Hello everyone, so glad to see everyone here, including Rick today. This is uh, our conversation after installment number eight. And it has a lot of very juicy stuff in it. I can't wait to hear what you all have to say. <laughs> all right, take it away. Welcome. Rick, would you like to say something first? Because we've missed you. I just wanted to say hi to everybody. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Jack. Hi. Hi, hi Jude. Hi, Rick. Hi, hi, Lorraine. It's nice to see all of you. I think you've met everyone, right, Rick? I, I don't think I've met Kevin before. Kevin, would you like to just, well, you can both introduce yourselves. Go ahead. Yeah, hi. Hi, Rick. Um, yeah, just um, I've been coming along for the last few weeks and um, I'm enjoying the space. Just coming here and um, and um, the words, you know, from this this uh, that I read, are, I, I find quite um, calming and gentle. And I and I and I really like the questions that come up. Um, so you know, quite happy to be here. Nice to meet you, Kevin. Yeah, same here. I went back to work um, in the middle of August, and uh, there's always a lot of it's. All, well, I'm a teacher, and so it's all virtual learning, and so the teachers have constant meetings, and so um, I've been having a lot of meetings during this time period. But today I don't, so that's why I'm able to be here today. That's great. That's great. Glad you're here. I was on mute. Nice seeing you again, Rick. Oh, thank you. Nice to see I, you. I, I think about, I see the date, the time when you take these uh these notes and are you woken up or do you just stay up that late <laughs> no i i go to bed at about 8 30 so a lot of the not all of them of course but a lot of them were written at like between two and three in the morning um which happened to be this time that i just wake up so you know some days there were only one right and at that time I was working too. That was at the beginning of the pandemic. And then sometimes there would be two or three a day. So there might be one in the middle of the afternoon and then another one before I went to bed. I go to bed pretty early. So generally speaking, that's how it all went down. It might be an early morning and then an afternoon and then an evening. But if it was on the weekend, then I didn't do that early morning one. It might not be until, you know, late morning. Um, so that's kind of how the timing of it went. There were some days when there were three and some days when there were only one. Um, and then of course, after we got to a hundred, then it stopped and then it didn't pick up again for another two more months. And then we started slowly in June, past 100 at 101. And I think we got all the way to 170 by the middle, by early August or late July. And then in early August, then we had another 10. So the whole piece of work is 180 uh, of the small chapters. And um, that's how it all worked out. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and I have no idea who just joined with my name, but I didn't move a muscle. So <laughs> muted, whoever they are. I I just was listening to Rick, and boom, there's somebody else there. That's me. <laughs> 
hello, is somebody there? Yes, I'm changing the name here. <laughs> is this Irene? Who is this? It's Irene. Hi, I was wondering why you have my name on I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to rename myself here. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. The name up there is better than mine, but I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna try and fix it. Not very good at this. But... Well, it's nice to have you, Irene. I managed to get on, which is my big surprise. Oh. I'm glad missed you did. It, missed it last week, and I was very unhappy about that. Ian. Can you put, are you going to put your video on? or would you I, did, I did re-listen after it, you know, got on, so you could re-listen. But did it get, there we go, I got fixed. Okay, how about video, Irene? I don't want to be seen, thank you. Okay, all right, no problem. Okay. I'm, I'm eating. That's fine. That's fine. And Irene, you're in England, right? I'm sorry, what? Where, where are you? Remind me. I'm on Long Island in New York. Long Island. Okay. Cool. Nice to have you. Okay. Is there anybody else from that area that you know of? Anybody else want to announce they're from Long Island? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Great. Well, who'd like to uh, go? Go ahead, Judy. I'd like to um, um, really jump ahead. Um, you know, Rick, when I met, when we had that. Uh, 60s talk in the beginning and then you said there'd be more and it ended with sharing as we did in the 60s or the hippie time um is you got 180 chapters and we're only on 50 does it get i don't want to say does it get better <laughs> <laughs> um is it more hopeful <laughs> Well, um, I could say that there's, there is repetition built into it. Um, and again, the whole idea of it is living as a free spirit, a living, living as a spirit being who has a body in service to the truth. So with that as one of the main themes, um, yeah, I mean, to me, um, uh, a lot of the chapters are, um, you know, they're, they're short, but they're also really getting that point across of, of what the mission is. So, um, but I like to think of it as like, um, a double album or something where, you know, there's some songs that talk to you more than others. And, um, some are, are actually funny and, um, the second part, that second 90, group of 90, um, they really go into some really interesting topics. So, you know, that's the main idea of the whole book is how do you live this way all the time? And that's what all of the chapters are about. And you will notice that there's some repetition built in. Um, and I asked about that too. And so they said the humans need repetition so, you know, that's how I see it. Thank you. Uh -huh. And Judy, I'd like to ask you to say some more about, just let's, let's just ask about installment eight. You said, does it get more hopeful? And so may I ask, what are you feeling now about what you've seen so far? Well, does it not feel, because there's, it's very, as Rick said, the chap chapters are short, but to me, the, they're so dense and so clear in terms of asking us to live in a well, way. Well, there was one where it, it says that um, it's not a guarantee that, yes. you know, <laughs> that's yes. the one I'm referring to. And yes. I don't, I don't, uh, I took some, uh, there is an urgency to these times. Everything hangs in the balance. 
there is no guarantee that our plan will work. Yes. As I've alluded to, there is a great resistance to love on the earth. And so I can see now why you might feel that's not hopeful. And it is also a call to see your power <laughs> as a co-creator, which a course of love is all about, as a co-creator with Jesus as a companion, with each of us as companions. So, yes, I can see both sides of that, yes. And uh, for me, it is a amazing call to our own strength, to who we truly are. And that's very, very powerful. But I can see that it can sound like, oh my God, no one's taking care of me. I gotta do something. I talk to me, oh no, <laughs> which is true. I, I, I got that, but Rick is leaning in. So what do you want to say? So, so Jude, in, in your ministry, in your part of the world, in your part of this whole puzzle, it will work. But as far as the totality of the whole complicated Earth project and time, I think that's what was being referred to. We're not unsure about that. But we are sure that Jude is living as Christ and blessing everyone and living an example life. And that's all that we can do as individuals. Um, we don't have any control over that big picture. You know, we're, of course, we have to be hopeful, even during um, dark times, but we know for a fact that Christina and Rick and Jude and Lorraine and Kevin and Irene and Jacques, that today, that we are going to be living as Christ and blessing people. And that's, that's what we can do. And so that's what we try to keep focused on is just today. Mm. Christina is good about reminding me about staying focused on now. That's now is what I was going to say. Forget now. today. Who knows what's going to happen in the next moment. Right oh, now, right. everything I feel, every, joining with all of you being here, Every word I spoke to you, Judy, is completely loving and grateful, and I'm glad to hear everything you have to say and feel everything you want to share, and that's all I know. I know nothing beyond this moment. And that, in one sense, is, is scary, very scary. On the other hand, it is extremely freeing and powerful. Jack, please. I'd like to share a few notes that I took on the um, last installment. Overall, this book so far is telling me you have to drive in now. You have to do it now. You can't wait anymore. This is the time to involve yourself and act. And I love the this or that. There's no more... Yes, but I don't know. You have to choose and um, it just, there's no way back. And I love the idea that we are the first wave and we have to prepare the people who are not quite ready yet, but we have to do our part to help them out. And um, I love the part when it says the reader becomes the book. Uh, yeah. We're over with reading. We just have to be what we learned so far, and we have learned probably enough to start acting mu much more now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's only cool. only you can express what you have absorbed in the way that you can, mm -hmm. and so you know you can think of yourself as accomplished and ready to move forward, mm -hmm. and. Um, so to me, that's very powerful. And also it's a, a big pat on the back, you know, because all of us read the books and we wanted to throw them across the room sometimes and it was hard and we, um, we put in the time. And so now it's saying, okay, we're, we're done with that part of it. And we're ready to just start living this all the time. Mm -hmm. And so. There you go. Yeah, yeah, I love that. You were just reminded us, Rick, of the word that's used in the course of love. The accomplished, we are the accomplished. That's a message that's very clear. And absorbing that and being it is, is what this is about. Saying it's no dithering anymore. <laughs> it's time to be it. 
And speaking of throwing the book, when I first read The Course of Love, it was in three volumes, um, you know, bound in dark blue. And I literally did throw the first book across the patio and it's all marked up on the edges from <laughs> picking up dirt. <laughs> uh, so yes, literally did that. So it was quite funny when I read it, you know, in, uh, in Germany. Yeah. Thank you, Jack. And thank you, Rick. I, I'm, I'm going to chime in a little bit here um, with the thoughts that are going through my head in this moment. Um, hopeful, you know, we can define that in a number of ways. We can be hopeful that something will resolve itself or turn out the way we have maybe an expectation or maybe how we think it should appear. But I think hope in applying it to all the beautiful writing here is it, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter how it will turn out or appear because all will be well. All mm -hmm. is well mm -hmm. for us if we're living in our truth. Um, there's one of the chapters that talks about freedom. And Rick, like you just said, uh, I do find there's repetition. There's things that are reiterated. You know, we, have, we read in these chapters about money again and about sharing. But freedom, and um, if we're living our truth and we are in our Christ self and being our Christ self. Um, you know, what did Christ say to us way back when? Um, the truth will make us free. So we, so when we're in our truth, we are free. We're free from our identity. We're free from our attachments. I think that's the name of one of the, the chapters. And to just live in that moment. And um, I wasn't on last week. Uh, we have visitors. They left Friday, so I was so looking forward to receiving the next installment, Christina, and listening to the recording to see what I had missed. And it was um, exciting for me to do that, actually, to get, you know, I'm losing my train of thought. But um, before, uh, in the chapters that I had missed, there was something that had come up for me and it's gone, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, I think maybe Stuart saying that the journey is almost like an epistle in, in the time of Christ, right? It's so direct. It is, it is our mission. It's, it's laying out sort of what we have to be. Um, but oh, I know what it was that came up for me in the other readings, was that time and eternity, they are intertwined. That's spoken in the course of love. And being in the moment um, where time and eternity is, is just one all the time, that's our being. But I've been saying this prayer that comes to me, and it's um, in the gift of this new day, in the gift of this present moment, in the gift of time and eternity intertwined, let me be thankful, let me be attentive, and let me be open to what has never been, to what has never happened before, in the gift of this new day, in the gift of this present moment, in the gift of time and eternity uh, intertwined. And that's that's what this whole journey is for me in this this moment. And what what is coming out for me is um, to be thankful. We have another, chapter 50 was on gratitude again. And to be grateful just for the belt that holds up our pants. And to be grateful for the lady that dyes our hair. And that every little thing that we have in our life we can't take for granted. It is gift. It is such gift. And when we can see with the eyes of Christ, um, it is being thankful and being grateful for everything. And then to be attentive, it's telling us to pay attention, you know, to pay attention to what's going on. I think one of the chapters says, give whoever you're with your full attention. Um, give them your money if you need to. Give them, you know, um, 
whatever they need. Give them books, give them your resources, right? So pay attention to what is needed in the moment by those we're with that, that have been sent to us, right? And share, um, share. And share, share. That keeps and coming up, right, for share us. And after you've taken care of yourself. Yes. And being in the moment is what enables all of that to come naturally. Because if I'm in the moment, I appreciate every word you're saying. I'm here with you. And there's no need to even think about, am I being grateful because I'm simply here with you. That's, that's beautiful summarizing that. Thank you, Christina. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. And I just wanted to add one little thing when you started off talking about hope. This is something that, I don't know, I came across a long time ago and I loved it, which is hope is something that is more human. We hope for something to happen. We hope for somebody to show up. We hope for some, you know, event or something. But the word faith is hope and. It's faith that it is so. We're not hoping for something. As Rick said, it is faith is knowing in this moment, because we're here in this moment, knowing that all is well. Because we can't say if everything's going to be well tomorrow. Well, when we get there and if we're in the moment and being grateful and all the things Jenny talks about, it is well, but I don't know because I'm not there. I'm here. So all is well. You know, there's that beautiful prayer that uh, Ju uh, Julian of Norwich, you know, all things will be well, all things are well or will be well. I've said that for a long time, but I have changed it to say all things are well. All things, everything is well, mm -hmm. as opposed to will be well. And that, that's kind of where I am. Kevin, go ahead. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, yes, it was lovely bringing up, um, yeah, I think that phrase I heard when I was younger, all, all, all things are well and all manner of things are well, That's I right. think. Yeah. Lovely phrase, heard yeah. it a few times. Yeah, um, are well, exactly. Um, the, what was really nice was just hearing that, that this gratitude, because I, I looked at this chapter on gratitude and it, it really surprised me. You know, because um, gratitude, you know, I, it, 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 it touched me really on, on, a, on another level, really, just reading through that little chapter on gratitude. And, and I got into quite a nice space, really, with just really just looking at that, sensing into that feeling of gratitude. And, and there's a sweetness and the newness to that. So that's, that's what's so nice about the, the this, what I like about the, what this book come through, that I am, and it, you know, I can feel that it, it was talking to me energetically, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I've gone into Course in Miracles for about a year and, and I, 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 I knew my mind was hijacking that and, and I went into something else and, but this, this is an immediate kind of gentle, kind of um, contact with myself, I feel, you know, reading, uh, or even, there's another layer, I'm not even, I'm not just reading, there's something happening. But that gentleness um, of, the, of the actual gratitude is, is energetically, what I'm kind of looking forward to is to kind of just, maybe just um, soak myself a little bit more frequently in, in this, in the words, whatever I'm drawn to, the chapters, you know, I'm just, I just pull up a chapter, I see something you've posted and then I'll, I'll, I'll read it, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's just really interesting to see that, that I it was kind of, you know, I was grateful, but actually there's a, there's a, there's a layer of gratefulness that I had kind of forgotten about, really, really forgotten about all these little things. And so a lot of some images came up of, of people struggling and other situations and situations and then looking at, you know, I, I, I have a lot, even though there's a, there's a, one of the practices that I have been looking at, you know, is that I have a bit of a, you know, I had a bad habit 
of, of complaining. I'd, I'd find the, my ego would come in through the back door. And I'd notice it would engage with complaining. But what I started to sense, you know, to notice a little bit more is 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 this. Uh, not so often, it still happens, this, this creation of identity through complaining, you know, it comes in very subtly sometimes, you know, in conversations with people, it's dying to complain. So I'm kind of, as you say, um, we, we've all done, you know, the, the work and read these books and everything else, but I think that feel, yeah, absolutely that it's, there's a stage now where we are, you know, our, we, I can actually say it's a word I didn't really use very easily, but I, I can really see that now on and off. Just little glimpses of the, 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 that I am the Christ like everybody else. There's this Christ that comes that's sitting here right now. And um, through, the, through the, the difference in bodies and color and language, and there's just one... So it's really nice. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. And just on a lighter note, one of the practices I've had for a number of years, and hopefully I've actually not needed it so much lately, but is to say, being aware that I'm complaining, so I say before I start, I need to whine. And then I whine, and then I say, I'm done whining. <laughs> that is a nice, funny way to diffuse the ego's power over me. I love that. Yeah. Thank I you warn people that. that's what I'm doing. And I do yeah. it, and then I'm done. I'm going to whine. Okay. I love that. Right. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> it worked for me, Kevin. Okay. I'll give it a go. Because <laughs> oh, I'm no saint. All right. <laughs> <laughs> in case you were wondering. John, welcome. I'm sorry I didn't welcome you. I know you're listening in to us and walking. It's really nice to have you here, John. Yeah, can you hear me? It's probably noisy where I am, so. Yeah, and it, it also is a very poor sound. We can barely hear you, but we know you're here and we love you and we're joined with you, feeling you. Thank you. We can't hear you, John. Okay, anyone else? That was beautiful. I'd like to raise the question of collective work. Um, I don't know how we are going to get there. I still have the impression that we're all working uh, from our own positions, from our own thinking, from our own beliefs. How truly join much better. Anybody have an idea? May I ask you to say some more about the first statement you made? You made a statement that's pretty interesting to me, that everyone is working from their own. In, but do you see a common ground in terms of, yes, everyone is unique, absolutely. We have different lives, different, you know, essential personalities and essential gifts to give. Is that what you mean or? Yes, but I'd like to know how some of you uh, reach better uh, in making a team with three, four, 10 people. I still have um, difficulty in, in, in teaming with uh, what I would call spiritual people. But uh, they all seem to be more my own spiritual path and uh, don't seem to be uh, easily making team. I don't know if I'm wrong, if somebody, uh, somebody has another experience. Jack, um, years ago, I was at a Tara Singh retreat conference, whatever. And one of the things that he said that I've never forgotten and that really just I try to remember is there is no somebody else. So we are all the one, um, but we're coming from our individuated self and form. And so um, 
I, in a way we are each individually doing this, but we come together in something like this to bring that energy together at, to increase it and to, you know, really let it ripple out further and further. So in my, in my remembering that there is no somebody else is that that otherness is myself and that um, uh, what I do for myself, I do for the other. And that was the, also the thing about sharing and giving. We're only sharing and giving to ourselves, really. And so, um, so there is no somebody else. And that is just, when he said those words, mm -hmm. I'm just a, you know, it was really amazing. It was really helpful for me in, in my journey. And, 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 you have my journey. and you have your journey. And, um, and I guess anytime we speak, we are speaking from ourself or individuated self. So I don't know if that is any clarification on where you were going with the job or not. So you're saying there's no other. Excuse me? There's no there's, other. No, yeah, there's no other. In fact, chapter 53 of this installment, which is installment eight, says the new way to see others is as different aspects of oneself, different reflections of you as you are to them. So. Can you hear me? Yes, Irene, go ahead. Okay, what popped into my mind was the picture of a wheel and the hub and that you know as the spokes get closer to the hub they get closer to each other and so whether you want to see the spokes as individual identities or aspects of, of yourself or myself as we you know, we're, we're moving towards the hub in which we are just all the same. It, it just becomes one essence or one, I don't know what word you want to use. But I think that's a good visual um, mm -hmm. that, that we're, we're just all part of this big um, circle. All heading towards the center. Oops. That's what popped into my head. Jack, would you like to respond? My um, difficulty is um, at times I just know I'm exactly in the same wavelength with some people but this is uh, a rare occasion uh, still. I'd like that to happen more often, but it doesn't happen that often, at least in my life. Mm -hmm. Kevin, did you want to say something? Yes, it's, um, it's interesting um, what you're talking about. You know, one of the things that I've, in, in the last year, I've, I've, I took up, um, Whirling, I don't know if you know whirling, whirling dervishes dancing. Mm -hmm. And I did it because there was, I, I remember experiencing a, a, a sample of this once. And, um, and this whirling dervish, what we do is we, we meet once, once a week and it's, 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 you know, dancing in the opposite direction and one hand is to, mm -hmm. it's quite physically challenging. Um, it's but it's, a, it's right, a Sufi form of prayer. Yes, it's, it's a, a Sufi form of prayer. Form of prayer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a form of prayer. And it, it's, it's, it's as, as I've been doing this since last August, it's fantastic for really um, sh uh, helping with my focus and attention, you know, because it really shows up my monkey mind, you know. <laughs> um, but what, I, what I've noticed from that, one of the, the things that's come through with it is that I've really always noticed that we're different, all the people that come in this group. There's little groups, there's only a small group of people that do it, but they're all a bit different, they, you know, different. And, um, but I, the resonance of the group, there's no question that my energy is, is better when I'm with, with other people now. I feel, you know, I've got more energy to do, to do the turns, for example. Um, 
and and at the end of the, the maybe, maybe the 40 minutes you know you're quite exhausted and stuff comes up you know and and you know sometimes you're in a good mood sometimes you're in a bad mood but i'm i'm recognizing the intelligence of sometimes we just don't you don't you know you don't really know, know but there is a resonance that something is going on I, and i really see that starting to see that more and more i think there's also an element as well that you know if the, if the consciousness of, of a group of people maybe there's a consciousness that's maybe you could call it dense maybe you, you know there maybe there isn't that kind of connection but there there is some kind of invisibility possibly going on that we possibly can be open to sometimes i don't know there that it makes is. Sense. yeah so, oh, right. and you know irene i like your your picture of the wheel and the spokes and uh, it's very similar to thinking in terms of a field or a net or a web because it's the relationships being in relationship in, and union jack you know as in the course mm -hmm. of love what does that really feel like it's an idea until we feel it in our bodies and the opening of the heart and if you place we've talked about a number of things but right now would you like to just put your hand on your high heart and feel the connection, mm -hmm. taking a breath, you know, allowing our minds to, it's like, as, as Irene was saying, getting closer to the hub and, you know, you can feel it as being sinking deeper into the common ground, sinking deeper into the ocean. At the surface, every wave is different. Every wave is unique and moving in a different way, in a slightly different direction, um, different size, different speed. But as you sink down below the waves, and that means in our bodies, taking our minds a deep breath and taking our minds to melt into our hearts, that's the place from which that union happens. And it's an energetic thing. And it's not just flowing right now amongst the eight of us. It's flowing way beyond that because we live in a field of love. We live in that field of the stuff of creation. And when we sink into our hearts and into our bellies, we melt into that place, into the stillness of that ocean. So feeling that when we're with someone or with people we want to feel like we're a team with, is, can be as close as a few breaths away within ourselves. And we can feel it right now. And we can feel it even with our eyes open. My vision tends to blur a little bit when I'm feeling that, which is what's happening now. But I can walk around, I can see, still see good enough to uh, walk around feeling this. And quantum scientists have now proven that there is a field that permeates all space, all space. There isn't a speck of space that this hu hugely powerful electromagnetic field doesn't permeate. And it's the stuff of creation. It's the, it's the field without which there would be no particles, there would be no atoms, there would be no form. And we are tapping into that. How'd that feel, Jack? Thank you. Feels very fine, very nice. And that's how I aspire to walk around all the time. <laughs> Bringing that power with me because that's the power of presence. Lovely. I'm feeling all of you and it feels wonderful. And that's beyond time and space. Everyone who watches this video will feel it. Could I say something else? Absolutely, Irene. 
okay, I, because I see everything in pictures, um, I, uh, I'm going to talk about the ocean and the waves. Now, I live by the ocean, so it's easy for me to, you know, if I couldn't see one in my head, I could go see one like five minutes away. And this may be harder to visualize to somebody who lived on the plains. But you always think, or I would always describe the, the, the wave as part of the ocean. You never talk about a wave as not being a part of the ocean, but the wave is the ocean in expression. So the wave goes out and it, and, and it you know, is doing its wave thing. And then it, it recedes and becomes a part of the ocean. So maybe if we could see us all as waves, but we're definitely the ocean and we're, we're definitely always a part of the ocean, but we're manifesting or whatever word you want to use, um, you know, doing our thing as a wave. Mm -hmm. Wave goes out, goes, comes back into the ocean. Always is a part of the ocean. And, and I, you never hear anybody talk about a wave as not being a part of the ocean. Yes. Beautiful. I was doing, I do um, a, re, a breath meditation. And in it, a lot of times, you know, they say inhale into your stomach and then your chest and let it go like a wave. And so many times and in another meditation, you just, you, you, you kind of, at first I pictured myself on the shore and I would see the wave come in and then the wave go out and the wave come in and the wave go out and you get that rhythm, which is wonderful for meditation. And the other day, just, just the other day, all of a sudden I went, I am the ocean. Mm -hmm. And when I breathe in, I bring that in. And when I breathe out, I push that out. And it was totally different than being separate on the beach, watching it go in and out. It was very powerful. And that's what I use from now on, because it just is just so much more real. So Irene, thank you, because that is, that is true. The wave cannot be separate from the ocean. We, and so anyhow, thank you. Yeah. It's a breath away, that depth, that presence. Absolutely. I love that. And if all of us walked around that way, can you just imagine there would be no sense of any separation, no sense of any conflict, no sense of any other. And that's the magic in the middle is the miracle. And yeah. things that need to happen just happen effortlessly. Yeah. Maybe, um, Jacques, I'm thinking, you know, in, in the er one of the early chapters, it's Jesus and the Ascended Masters that say they are writing this, where the Ascended Masters, I think, um, said that we are part of a collective now, a part of a collective. We've been called to this. Uh, this is my perception of what I read there. And, you know, as I come together, I look forward to coming together to this group every week. Um, uh, Christina has used this taking a breath and, and putting our hands on our hearts. It's done amazing things for me. But what is occurring to me as I sit here feeling um, being a part of, of the ocean, being the ocean, yet being the wave in my individual expression, but I'm always receding or going back, joining the, the ocean that I'm part of. But what I'm sensing, what I'm getting, what I'm feeling right now is we've just gone through this little exercise with you, Jacques, feeling what Christina is feeling, feeling a, a sense of connection, a sense of communion, even just within this little group, sharing what we are sharing, a common experience or a common uh, message and how 
how it's affecting us, how we're interpreting it, how we're understanding it. And I'm, I'm assuming at this point, not a lot of people yet, even though journey is exists, those of the course in miracles community or a call, although I know Christina, you said lately you are um, posting on different um, different group sites, right? But that we come together even um, every week and we're in always in constant transformation. We are we are transforming ourselves, it, our inner journey, our inner life, transformation. We are ascending. We are resurrecting. We are the elevated self. That is going on every minute, right? We are trying to be aware of that in each minute and, and um, conscious and practice, practicing what puts us in touch with the truth of who we are, that essence, that sameness, that oneness. And I just kind of experience uh, a, that oneness just among us coming together. And I'm thinking back to the Ascended Ma um, Master saying, you're part of a collective now. You're, and maybe this group will grow, maybe it won't in this sense, in this format but it's going to but that sense of being in communion and being um, one maybe in this calling in this collective um, is what we're even experiencing and growing into just by meeting here every Wednesday I look forward to it because I am always so impacted um, just by by being here with all of you not to say that the others aren't as important or there isn't the sameness there, but um, I feel very privileged that I have even been called here. And feeling that oneness with you, Jacques, with Christine, with Judy, Kevin. And as you said, I believe you said this earlier, Lorraine, that whatever we do, we do for all. This is a powerful network and this happens to be one node. And everything we do here in this one teeny tiny little note, think, think internet, there is no center as such. It's, it's spread, spread across the entire mm -hmm. planet. And there are little nodes here and there, and they're all connected. Mm -hmm. So whatever we do here, we do for all. And whatever anyone else is doing at any other time in any other place to join, they're doing for us too. So every second counts. Rick, please go ahead. Well, I've been listening to everything that's been said and every comment that all of you are making, you're describing something that is completely diametrically different from how all of us thought life on earth was all about, you know, we're all individual people and we like things and don't like things and we have to defend ourselves and take care of ourselves and all of that mind stuff. And, but what you are all talking about is the opposite of that. And that's what we're doing is we're moving from point A to point B. And it's not an easy journey to get there, to live in the world in the way that all of you are describing. Uh, but that's what all of us are doing now and setting and being an example of. And it couldn't be any more different than the old way but it's more freeing and it's um, you know, more fun and more exciting and it, without all of those human thoughts that are constantly interrupting and saying, you should do this and you should be this way and so-and-so said this about you and you, you know all of that stuff, all that human stuff. So I am really energized to hear all of you talk about this new way. Um, which is totally different than the old way. And that's what we're doing. And that's what this, this work is helping us to do is to remind us who we really are. We're not really all of these ideas in our heads. We're really this energy that activates the body, not really the body and the brain. So 
thank you. It's very clear to me from listening to everybody that everybody's describing this new way. So thank you for energizing me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And 55, it says souls respond to other souls like food responds to heat. Simple, you know, it's simple. <laughs> and it's a waste of time to respond to egos. And um, yeah, it really is. Uh, it's like talking to a brick wall and why even just be it and don't, you know. And, and I think it's also not just a waste of time to respond to egos, but to even try to understand them. Or like Jack, I think what you were saying is that you, you, you find that people aren't understanding you completely or, or really feeling it like you do. And yeah, that's going to happen. But that we just need to feel it more for ourselves, you know, and uh, but I like that, you know, don't even respond to egos because it's, um, it's just not going to, it's not going to go there. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, a, a, uh, and I'll finish up real quick. Um, one of the quotes from A Course in Miracles that I like is it's better to protect the truth than to attack another's position. And boy, that's so necessary for me <laughs> to bring to mind uh, during this political season. As really, and we talked, someone else brought that up about the truth. And we are here to represent the truth not to attack someone else, not to judge something else, but just really protect the truth. And, and may I just add to the protect the truth, just so we're clear, may I check with you, is to be the truth, to be that presence, to listen without having to say anything, but listen truly and enfold that person and that energy that they're expressing, whether it's anger or fear or disagreement or whatever, to truly be that and be the example of that is what I think you mean when you say protect the truth. Is that right? Well, just protect the truth for yourself. Just bring that to mind so that we don't get out there, you know, in okay. the falsehoods. Yeah. I don't know if that's different than... Well, it's probably me because I have a, a response to the word protect because I learned from a course of love. It took me years of, you know, with a course of love to learn that the protect, protection is another form of control. It actually was a huge awakening for me to recognize that if I felt the need to protect anything, then well, I was... it's a quote from A Course in Miracles, so maybe I'll stop quoting it. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. Rather. It is a deeper understanding of, of that. And I'm not making yeah, you wrong. Now, yeah, this is, and I think this is what Rick is alluding to, is the fact that, yeah, we've had that as a base. Exactly. And now it is, uh, and now, so be it, the end of A Course of Love. So be it. Yes. And, uh, okay, so be the truth rather than attacking another's position. I can change that. Because I do like to remind people that I uh, read with and stuff when something comes up, because I think it's a very valuable uh, lesson, mm -hmm. not to attack another's position, but to be the truth, see the truth, enhance the truth. Can I just tell one more story? I didn't hear her. This is Irene. Mm. Might I just tell one more story? This is something that happened to me this week. Absolutely real. Um, I was sitting on a couch and a ladybug landed on my arm in the house. And I tried to shoo it away and it wouldn't go away. So I carried it outside. And so then three day, for three days in a row, every time I've been at the computer, the ladybug has showed up, walked across the screen of the computer, did that a few times, and then it would, it would stay around maybe five minutes or so. And so on the third day, I said to it, um, and I talked to things, I said to it, so what is your message for me? And the thought I got was, 
whatever you do, you cannot separate yourself from or erase your connection to spirit or to truth. And the important part of that is why that fits me is because all over my house, I have um, bug repellent uh, things plugged into my outlets. And there is not a bug anywhere in my house, not a bug anywhere. And so that really um, was a, you know, um, I went, oh my goodness. You know, here's this ladybug, un, un, comes and goes and will, does, doesn't seem to be affected by my bug repellents, which I, which is fine with me because I like ladybugs a lot. But, um, and, and that was what came to me. No matter what you do, you can't separate yourself from spirit. And so I just want to share that little story. I thought it was a nice little story. And a true little story too. And I haven't seen it today. Yesterday I asked the question, so what's your message for me? Thank you, everybody. I needed this so much and I appreciate all of you. I have to go to another meeting, got to go back to work, but thank you so much, everybody, and have a wonderful week ahead. Thank, thank you. Rick. Is, bye. Bye. Well, it is coming up for six o'clock here. Um, anybody have any last things they'd like to say before we close? Just thank you uh, for putting out those uh, every Saturday. Like I say, I just get so excited. It's like getting a gift that Christmas. And I just, and I really look forward to it. And of course, listening to them throughout the week, I'll put them on. Um, oh, I have a question about that. How can I get it so it just goes from chapter to chapter so I don't have to click on it every time? Are you talking about the audio, Judy? The audios, yes. At the end of each installment, there is actually a button to download the whole installment audio at the bottom of the last chapter. And there's also a place to download the whole PDF of that installment mm -hmm. at the end of that the chapter. So if you look at, what was it, up to chapter 55, what was it, I think, if you look at the last chapter. But also, um, we quietly uh, put in a uh, new main tab this last week, which you may not have noticed because we haven't troubleshooted it yet, but it's a tab that says Download Index. Oh, okay. So all of the installment downloads are on one page. If you click on that main tab that says, I believe it's called Download Index. Thank you. Even I, without that, the last chapter of every installment has it at the base of bottom of the last chapter as you get to the end of the installment. Oh, I wasn't downloading because it's easy to just go to what I have. Yeah, yeah, you can listen right there to the whole thing. Yeah. Thank you. I have to go to... So okay, well, I'll close in that case. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. It was lovely, as usual. Thank you, Irene. Thank you, John, even though we can't see you. Jack, Kevin, Lorraine, be well. Likewise, Christina. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Bye.